Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 10 of Brand Studio Live. I'm Ramit Arora and I have a brand new set of brand masters with me today. Hosted jointly by the HD Brand Studio and DMA Asia, Brand Studio Live brings together the country's top CXOs and we talk about the hottest topics in marketing. In the process, we not only end up learning from the best, but being inspired by them. Episode 10 is a continuation of the Mumbai chapter of Brand Studio Live where we moved out of the HT newsroom to the very inspiring venue uh, of BSC. Thank you to BSC for hosting us. Uh, previously, of course, called the Bombay Stock Exchange. Can there be a more uh, fitting host? Big thank you to everyone at the BSC. Uh, without further delay, let's get started with today's episode. The internet has given marketeers uh, plenty of opportunity. It, however, has also presented a huge set of challenges to marketeers and uh, I can tell you personally that I've, I've struggled with a few of them. The need to constantly work on retaining existing customers and to bring in new ones in the face of fierce competition. There's a wide variety of products to choose from, which means customers have the right to be fickle. Is the concept of brand loyalty, therefore, fading out? Uh, do we need to bow to this fickle customer and to this new reality? And if not, how do we persuade customers to stay loyal in this digital age? My first guest is Vitika Joshi Deoras, VP Strategy and Brands at IHCL. Vitika has worked across sectors like retail, financial services, telecom and consumer goods. Her expertise lies in data and analytics, business planning, product management, and consumer strategy. It's, it's really a pleasure to have you here, Vitika. Uh, simple question to start. Do you think loyalty has taken on a new avatar in the digital era, or do you think loyalty is an overstated concept now? And uh, what's the path you think brands need to, need to chart uh, in this new reality? So when I look at digital, and uh, I'm speaking as a professional, when I look at digital, uh, I think it's done two things for us. One is it's brought about an age of awareness and an age of transparency. So there's a plethora of information that is today now available and is very easily accessible. And hence there is, there is an awareness level which was hitherto not there. And there are levels of transparency which again are unheard of. What these two things really, really do is they have a huge uh, dependence and, and what they have really led to is a passing of the power in the hands of the consumer. And now today the consumer actually holds genuine power in, in, in his or her hand. Now when we look at that and the implication that has on loyalty or on brands, I think it's a super, super age for brands to be in. And contrary to popular belief, I do believe that in this age, with the advent of digital technology, digital means of communication, and with the consumer becoming more and more digitally savvy, I think it's an age where brands can actually thrive and build loyalty like never before. So today, and when we look at any sort of a research which is happening, whether we like to call it uh, Generation X or Y or Z, they're not only just interacting with brands, they're actually adopting brands and they're actually adopting them at very deep levels. So brands today have actually become a means of self-expression for this audience. Yes. And digital allows you to engage with consumers. It allows you to put forward your proposition and consumers then respond and engage with it and react to it. So to me, I think we are entering a new age of loyalty with the advent of this digital technology and with the consumers getting more and more digitally savvy. So to, to me, it's a fantastic age to be in. I think the challenge that starts coming in is with this massive awareness and this massive amounts of transparency, brands which are built on genuine value proposition, brands which are built on the principles of honesty and transparency, brands which believe in creating an element of trust and can actually pass that on to the consumers as well are the brands that are going to thrive. So I think the, the rules of the game have actually uh, are fairly found, uh, foundational and uh, the way we are playing it has changed a little bit. But loyalty for me continues to be a concept which is very, very relevant. Uh, brands love loyal consumers and consumers love brands who treat them loyally. I'm going to ask you for, uh, for an example from your work or otherwise in closing the loop because uh, 
the customer journey is a loop from where they start discovery to where they finish and uh, often when that loop is is closed satisfactorily uh, the customer sort of gets back on the loop because you know you you sort of engage them through the journey and on to the next one is it a uh, is it an example you can share from from your work or your experiences on actually building that loop and closing it absolutely so when we um, look at any sort of a customer journey mapping that's the first thing that we get down with and it's very fascinating and i'm glad you mentioned that because uh, you know earlier there was a traditional customer journey which used to exist and now it's just become from anywhere to anywhere honestly i could be sitting in my car and i could read a newspaper ad which tells me something i could move on to my device which tells me something else i could see a hoarding i could be talking to a friend i could be flipping through some social media channel and there could be a recommendation there i could go to a consumer site and there could be something which is contrarian or 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 in agreement with what my hypothesis is so the touch points that actually interface with the customer before the customer makes his decision have increased many many fold and therefore what we start always by doing is mapping this customer journey and this is when we are only talking about the digital interface now add to this this all the information that hits consumers in the offline world add to this what we have traditionally always called word of mouth which is when two people sit over a over a cup of coffee and then they share views about companies and brands so these these points have actually just doubled or quadrupled in some cases and and that's where uh, the game has become very difficult and very exciting for marketers to actually map all of these out and make sure that they're giving to the consumer information which is contextual and in the right shape and size at that point of time in in the various jobs you've done uh, across the group and i i know you've dealt with uh, with famous coffee chains and brick and mortar there and and uh, you now deal with hotels and across your career you've dealt with so many categories uh have you found in your experience that uh, the the brands that you work with or, or the company has been able to successfully establish the loyalty is equal to more profit equation okay so um i think i've been a little fortunate here because i've worked mostly with industry leaders and so uh absolutely and for for us loyalty emanates from two three things one is we genuinely do believe that customers uh, who love us are customers who speak extremely well about us and therefore they are our brand ambassadors and therefore it affects brand equity positively we also believe that loyal customers are actually almost our uh, uh, you know our our customers for the keeps and they are the ones who actually give us most valuable feedback whether it be good or bad and therefore there are a huge source of voice of customer for us when we talk about loyal customers of course clearly they they contribute towards business and sales so that's something that goes without saying that somewhere lies in the definition of the phrase uh but for us the view of loyal customers is far far larger and therefore we do look upon our loyal customers to be quasi brand ambassadors to be our uh sources for feedback and of course uh Uh, by virtue of them being loyal they do contribute to business positively thank you so much thank that's you. that's very good insight thank you thank you so much thank you my next guest is alok arya lead digital uh, future group in a career driven by passion alok has acquired an in-depth understanding of the indian as well as a global consumer some of his specialties include business consulting marketing and advertising strategy demand generation social media and content in his current role he focuses on the creation of the digital which is a word by the way that i have learned today and i'm most fascinated by please tell us something about it today uh, the digital business models by synergizing online and offline ecosystems and uh, welcome alok uh, alok tell me in in your nature of business which is digital in so many ways how do you go beyond the basics and deliver an effective personalized experience and is it anything called a personalized experience first of all or uh, is it just easier to say a relevant shopping experience uh, talk to us a little more about that and tell us if we are on the right track in saying that uh, that is the path uh, to loyalty
I think uh, while the term looks scary and has been abused by, you know, I think the whole of the industry and thanks to our, you know, uh, platforms like Facebook and Google who have like kind of spoiled all, Oz, uh, all of us marketers. Uh, I think it's, it's nothing but, you know, the customer has just moved from a 90 mm or a 70 mm screen to a 6 centimeter screen, right? So that's, that was a physical world, this is a digital world. By digital, we mean any touch point wherein he or she is interacting with, you know, uh, any of the brands across. So I think what our job as marketers today, and primarily for me in the industry that I am, which is physical retail, is that how do I basically augment my business, number one, how do I kind of get consumers who are hovering around any of the touch points in the digital ecosystem to come back to my stores. And number three, I think all of the other guests have spoken at large, the millennial or the young customers, how do we kind of embrace them or rather they embrace the brands uh, so that we become a part of their uh, you know journeys. Second thing uh, about relevance. I feel, uh, you know, the, the subject that we're all talking about is loyalty. Uh, we feel that, you know, it, in, in today's age that, uh, you know, it, it's not like loyalty means that you are pushing your brand and you overtly want to sell your brand and you feel that a customer will, be, will become loyal and give you more dollars. I think loyalty today is simply that, you know, customers are embracing the brand. It's, it's the other way around. So they are, and loyalty is a very passionate, you know, space now. They are kind of... They are kind of representing the brands. They are becoming quasi brand ambassadors. Customers are asking, is the brand loyal to me? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So if you see, I mean, and I think a lot of uh, experienced people here would reckon with me is that if you look at the past decade or so, you know, the brands haven't changed. The brands will remain. They will make products, good services. If you see, the customer has changed. I'll, I'll just give you very simple three things. One, uh, the customer has changed from prime time to my time. You know, there was Chitrahar, now there is Amazon Prime, there's like, I can go anywhere and want uh, to see anything. The customer has changed from, you might know me, you better know me. So it's like, you know, Pele, it used to be like, you know, I, I can buy a Bata also, I can buy a Adidas also, but they knew nothing about me. Just that probably I was Mr. Arya's son who once in a year will buy an Adidas, but Bata twice a year because summers, winters, mom will take me to buy that black, yeah, yeah. ugly Polar looking shoot, pair. Uh, yeah. The third thing that I'm, I want to say is that... Uh, Suddenly the products or uh, services that brands used to make have become magical experiences. You look at any industry, hotels, you look at food, you look at the space that we are in retail. I think we no longer call ourselves as a retail company. We believe that we are a food and fashion company and if we have to make the users embrace our brand, we have to be relevant. Coming to the last part of the question, content. I think again, this is a very abused and loosely loosely used term. I mean, OTT is giving content, your social media is giving content. We feel that content is nothing but anything that can add value to a consumer. But I think the brands have become and need to become more and more human. So I think what we strongly believe in and I am a complete fan of is beautiful storytelling. And the beautiful storytelling does not need to be a three minute video or a three hours film. It can be a very simple uh, photograph of, you know, a mother and a daughter, which your brand talks about, but has a point of view and a certain body language. So I think that's, that's where we come from. Because today's generation, if we be overtly selling a product, I think they smell advertising from miles. And they kind of, it's like a North Pole, South Pole. They, they become repulsive to your brand. If you become a part of their life, if you become a part, part of their journey, I think then is when that they connect with you. And once they connect with you, as I said, loyalty is not about giving you more dollars. It's about that passionate relationship that then develops. So that's a, I think that's what uh, my point is. So loyalty is a little overrated and give yourself a chance for the customer to know you better. Any questions, any reactions, guys? When you think about uh, incredibly sort of deep engagement though, uh, which for example you see on the internet, uh, <coughs> there's a huge difference between what a Facebook and Google are able to do versus let's say traditional media companies are able to do because they've got really, really deep engagement. How, how do you apply some of these concepts in areas which sort of span across some of these categories where you know some of the concepts might be right, where you're talking about, hey, maybe it's about being yourself rather than really looking for customer loyalty, but still reconciling it with you will fail as a business uh, if you don't have deep engagement. Are lo loyalty and, deep, uh, and engagement sort of disconnected or are they con connected fundamentally in some way? 
I think uh, loyalty is an engage is an uh, extension of what sort of engagement and what sort of bond are you able to establish with the consumer, right? See today, uh, I feel that say example, if it's Mother's Day, you know, 99.99% of the brands will be saying Happy Mother's Day, oh what a great mother you are, oh what you know what you've done fantastic to our lives. There'll be only a couple of brands which will like suddenly stand up and the whole world will be talking about them. And for them, for those things, we need marketers like. I mean, we need people who have spent their entire lives decoding the consumer insights into something so out of the box that it suddenly feels, oh my god, the brand has a soul. If that soul is established, if that connect is there, trust me, I think loyalty, we, we will not be even bothered about loyalty. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, lovely. What a refreshing point of view Thank and so uh, adds to our conversation and discussion yeah. as we go through the day. Thank you. Thank you. My next guest is Smita Murarka, Head Marketing. Amante MAS Brands. Uh, Smita is a seasoned retail professional and an image consultant with over 15 years of work across brands such as Lifestyle, uh, Louis Philip, and Alan Solly, all brands that we've, we've seen and admired over the years. Having steered the launch and growth of many companies, be it related to apparel, uh, accessories, or footwear, Smita brings a deep understanding of uh, consumer fashion needs. It's a pleasure to have you here, Smita. Uh, Smita, you know, it worries me that lots of young marketeers, uh, and after every episode, I get lots of feedback, uh, seem to confuse behavior with loyalty. Uh, because somebody is buying from you and buys more than once, uh, I'm not sure is enough reason to say the person is loyal. Uh, tell us how brands can go beyond transactions and reward points uh, to drive true brand loyalty, uh, if there is a concept like that. Yes, absolutely, because uh, the traditional way of looking at loyalty is really devising programs which uh, reward the consumers through transactions and monitoring that and grouping consumers and confusing <coughs> it with behavior, as you said. Uh, but uh, in our world and the digital explosion that everybody is also talking about, uh, it's uh, changed a lot. Uh, where consumers want to go beyond that even from the brand's point of view as well as the consumer's point of view. They want to interact with the brand. So it's also the brand's responsibility to take that forward, engage with the consumer uh, throughout the path to purchase. So right from awareness to when they're making the decisions or up, up, up to when they transact. And uh, it's very important for them to hold the narrative differently at different points uh, because um, Today, the consumer is across different medias. They're choosing to interact with these media very differently as per their choice. So they might be on Facebook for a different reason. They might, and then they move to Instagram uh, just as catalog or just to absorb content. They go to OTT platforms, uh, which is a totally a new phenomenon, you know, to watch content. So they are choosing their uh, media very differently, and they do not want to be spoken in the same language, which is very transactional. So it's very important to understand the consumer, their state of mind, uh, really interact with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and uh, keep your narrative the same. Give us uh, an example of, uh, of building loyalty or, or, or an example of a effective loyalty strategy. Or so there are two examples, uh, one of which is about consumer experience. Um, so we know that about more than 40% of consumers uh, do a lot of research online and then finally uh, transact offline. Now in our world of intimate wear, there was really no destination or brands talking about it in an offline world exclusively, uh, which is an own channel. Primarily, this is a mom and pop store, uh, uh, you know, play. And uh, we set up our first intimate wear destination stores to talk about more about the brand, the different categories that we can offer, going beyond lingerie and talking about more intimate wear and, uh, you know, different uh, categories like sleep, swim, etc. So that was purely from a consumer experience point of view. Also, going back online and setting up our website purely from a discovery platform point of view. So not really to sell and, you know, give offers of add to cart and remarketing and all those things, but be there just for discovery. <coughs> so even if the consumer chooses to buy on third party stores, we are available. So that's one of the examples of creating consistent consumer experience across both offline and online. 
The other thing that we uh, did was co-created with consumers. Uh, so there was this large uh, portion of the audience uh, which was growing, which was a fuller figure segment, which was uh, largely neglected even as still today. And uh, there was really nobody reaching out to them at an individual level, understanding their problems, which is very differentiated from the rest of the segment. So we um, had a study done for almost a year, going after these consumers, talking to them individually, understanding their problems, and then putting a range in place. Even after that, going back to the same consumer, doing fit activities, uh, you know, not only at the first level, but all the three levels of fit activities, taking all their feedback and launching a separate brand altogether. Once we launched the brand, we went back to the same consumers, almost transacted with them, and today they are our brand advocates. So this brand called Ultimo that we launched uh, as a full figure specialist brand is uh, the best example we have a, right now. It's a great example. Yeah, yeah. so we've co-created that brand completely based on uh, consumer feedback and consumer participation. So uh, this consumer base is completely loyal, almost 100% if I can say, because there's nobody else which is connected with them at this level. Any uh, reactions, any questions, guys? Since fit is such an integral part in your business, uh, how does online really help? While online sure, uh, for sure helps in discovering uh, brand information, how does the con consumer actually complete her transaction? Because fit is such an integral part in the entire purchase process. Absolutely. Uh, that's a good question because uh, fit is 80% of a decision-making process. However, fit is also 80% of what people don't know. So 80% of women or more wear their wrong fit. Um, so not only online, offline also this problem exists. And uh, there are two kinds of consumers that we deal with. One is an absolute loyal base, uh, which has found a happy medium with Amante and they stick to the brand. Uh, so for them, it's a repeat kind of a buy. So it's a loyal base that comes back to our website because they know the brand well enough. For the new age consumers, there's a lot of education that we need to do, really talk about them. And this kind of consumer most likely doesn't have a better play offline too. So traditionally, they've been shopping at mom and pop stores and other stores where also they're not able to educate themselves. So we carry a similar narrative across offline and online, which talks about how do you measure yourself, get yourself fitted professionally. And in the online space, there's enough, enough apps and content integration which help them make that purchase. Also, of course, easy exchanges and sitting out of the comfort of your home and all make them uh, take that step to purchase. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, you. Lots to learn. And uh, hopefully, as we go through this episode, we'll be able to refer back to some of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. My next guest is Srinivas Rao, Senior Vice President, Marketing Lifestyle. Srinivas has over 20 years of experience in sales and marketing across FMCG, consumer durables and retail. He's played an integral part in Lifestyle's growth, establishing it as, as a youthful brand uh, and also building several others like Ginger, Forka and Milanj. Srinivas, uh, walk us through the seamless shopping experience because one of the things that certainly happened to, to us is we are torn between our love for the brick and mortar shop experience where we touch, feel and the convenience that online shopping brings to us. And uh, irrespective of which way you go, uh, how does the loop sort of get closed? Uh, tell us a little bit about that and tell us about uh, how uh, that experience can lead to loyalty. Today we are talking about the new age consumer. The new age consumer essentially is a digitally influenced consumer, right? So if you look at the digitally influenced consumer, the way she shops, right? So like we heard before in some of the episodes, right? Um, the journey begins at, at a certain point, we do not know where, and the journey ends at a certain point, we do not know where. So essentially the first point to note is the consumer is omnichannel, not the brands, not the businesses, right? The consumer is omnichannel. So she is looking at information uh, at various places. It could be the, uh, the, the new age mediums, it could be the conventional mediums, right? So it's important for brands to recognize that first. The first point to recognize is the consumer has changed. The entire journey has actually been disrupted. Right? When we say disrupted, we uh, took understand this journey further. What we've done is we actually uh, studied the consumer journey and we said there are various moments of truth in the consumer journey, right? The first is the zero moment of truth, which is discovering fashion, right? So that's been disrupted. Uh, earlier, they used to come to stores like Lifestyle to discover fashion, that's changed. They're discovering fashion elsewhere, right? 
Next is the first moment of truth where actually they are interacting with brands or products. It could be at a store, it could be online, right? That's the second first moment of truth. The second moment of truth is whether actually transacting, they're either trying or adding to cart, right? That's the, uh, that's the uh, second moment of truth. And the ultimate moment of truth is when they actually uh, use product, use the service, and then they recommend, right? So the entire journey has been disrupted and disrupted, uh, you know, significantly. So it's for us to kind of understand how, how each of these parameters we're talking about internet and the explosion of information that's available how is how each of these have actually influenced the journey and for us to kind of map each of these moments of truth and ensure that each of these moments of truth is really worked upon so that's really how we look at the new age consumer but tell me how does a new age consumer look at us okay. and I, i'm just changing the lens and when you see it from the customer's lens how do you sort of uh, how do you build share of share of attention and and yeah. share of mind uh, because that finally is uh, yeah. where where loyalty comes right so this is our journey yeah. but there's this is the way we map the journey but there's also a lens from which the customer is viewing so, it so one of the significant changes that we see is for the new age consumer you know the number of times they actually access their mobile device uh, can you guess how many times uh, an average person actually touches his or her device 145 I mean, thereabouts. I mean, there are people uh, who go much beyond 145, but let's say 145 times, right? So every time when a news app, they're seeking something new, right? Similarly, when they actually walk into a store, a fashion store, they're seeking something new, yeah. right? So uh, essentially, the change that they seek is now at a much rapid pace. So for us, one of the significant changes that we've made, whether it's our online store or in the physical stores, is that we are a lot more faster in terms of the way we change our fashion, right? That's a significant change, right? Plus, what has also happened is that because of the influence of the online stores, right, there's a lot of interactivity at play, right? Now, you, when you go to an online store, you're able to exactly search for what you want, a particular size, a particular color, a particular fit, right? Now, the, the new age consumer is seeking the same convenience of a physical store, right? So for us, though we are an omni-channel player, we've got a very, very strong on offline presence. So for us to kind of ensure that each of these elements of interactivity is now transferred to the <coughs> physical store becomes very, very important, right? And so that's exactly what uh, we do when I spoke about the customer journey, when she's actually interacting with the products on the floor, a uh, lot more interactive technology is at play, right? So we actually now empowering the customer in her mobile device to kind of seek fashion advice, seek beauty advice, and definitely enable her to make the decision uh, like she actually likes it. Do we have questions? Yeah. What's your USP and what do you think for, for departmental stores like yours, you know, would be a key differentiator when it comes to having an experience which is not omni-channel or more service-oriented, but more fashion-led? Yeah, so the first and fundamental uh, difference, of course, is, um, is, is that we cater to the entire wardrobe of an Indian consumer. Uh, two, of course, is we are more localized in terms of our sensibilities. Uh, three, of course, we've got the sustainable differentiator, which are in-house labels. Uh, we've got a host of about nine labels, uh, so that actually differentiates us from any other brand. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was a lovely session. Thank you. Really appreciate your being here. Thank you. My next guest is Rajiv Bansal, who actually represents uh, the view from uh, the news business. I guess I'll take you through the mechanics of how to take an existing business and sort of pivot it towards a more loyal customer base. Uh, that's what we've been doing in HT, so we'll use HT as a little bit of a case study here. Um, so let's go in stages, right? So uh, the good news is you've got an existing business. Uh, the bad news is you don't have enough loyal consumers. Uh, the incredibly bad news is if you don't have deep engagement, you're dead as a business. And the first thing, uh, at least on the consumer internet, you look for is data. But not all types of data are the same. So a lot of people start with analytics and analytics gives you a great understanding of your current consumer base. So it gets you to the top of the hill you're on. 
Uh, so what you need to do is foundational research. And that's sort of step one in what we did at HT. So we went to consumers' homes, we went, did old fashioned, deep ethnographic studies, and we didn't even talk to them initially about our products. We talked to them about uh, how do they consume news? How do they consume related categories like information, entertainment, things like that. Uh, step two is uh, be incredibly objective about uh, the results of that. And so what we understood was uh, there were certain things uh, which we knew we could solve. Uh, by you know mapping what consumers wanted, uh, who would be loyal for us, and what we could provide. But there were certain things we didn't want to do because we were never going to be that company. So we were never going to be a Google. We were never going to be a Facebook. So we made early decisions, very early decisions, that we were going to continue to be a mainstream media company. Step three, uh, now's the time to start reorganizing around it. So we went and actually went and brought in lots of new skill sets. So for example, we built uh, one of the media industry's best data team. Uh, we went and built a uh, product, we built user experience, we built probably the strongest editorial, online editorial team uh, in the country. And then step four, uh, you go and execute like mad. And part of it is now you develop all these new skill sets, now you start taking advantage of them. So those would be sort of the four steps in which we sort of made this pivot. It took us about two years to build that foundation. It's still an ongoing effort. So that would be sort of the base mechanics of what you should do. Wonderful. My next guest is Mahesh Israni, Business Head New Ventures at Tata Global Beverages Limited. Uh, welcome, Mahesh. Thank you. 30 years of sales and marketing experience across various industries. Uh, we're very privileged to have you here. I know you worked uh, in lots of industries, primarily FMCG, and uh, you were heading Parag Milk Foods. Mahesh, my question to you is, I know you've dealt with the world before the internet and now you're dealing with the world with the internet and you're dealing with lots of brands uh, and brand value uh, with younger customers, digital first customers, uh, customers who have alternate lives almost in the digital world. It is tougher certainly now to, uh, to stand out, to be able to catch attention and to be able to keep it. In that sense, do you think the job of, uh, of building relationships with the brands that you represent and tell us a little about those as well uh, has become tougher than it was before or uh, do you think it's it's actually easier and more exciting in my view in fact if you really ask me the old brands and the traditional categories in which most bulk of the fmcg used to operate it is going to become tougher, yeah, as you rightly said, because of the clutter with the plethora of brands uh, which are coming in. <coughs> in fact, I have a very contrarian view on the building brand loyalty in the uh, age of internet. Forget building loyalty for brands. Uh, look at the way the evolution of the society is happening today. Loyalty is becoming a premium. So be it in your personal relations, be it in your brands, be it as professionals, for example, 30, 40 years back, you would stick with an organization for a longer period of time than what you are doing today. I think this is the era of millennials. In this era, to say that a customer is going to remain loyal to me, I would in fact go back and say define what is loyalty. There are digital native brands which are addressing to the digital native audience and hence for them, the clutter in a sense is only in the digital space and not in the larger ecos uh, ecosystem. Having said that, it is hence going to become or it is becoming difficult for even the large old brands to continue to be uh, build that loyalty at the level at which it would be in the earlier era. Let me give you a small example uh, from Parag Milk Foods you know, where uh, I build about two or three brands uh, in my space of five years. There's a classical case of a brand called Pride of Cows. This was a farm to home brand, which we had launched in Bombay and Pune. The entire concept behind the brand was, uh, of course, it was going to fight in the space of milk. Yeah? So it's as good as any fresh milk, dairy milk that you, uh, pouch milk that you get uh, at home. The challenge was, how do I differentiate myself? Of course, yes, the product has to be far more superior, but milk is milk. Yeah? There are government rules on the standardization. How do you really differentiate yourself in that, uh, in that mass category? That's when this entire philosophy of saying, what is a consumer buying you for? 
the consumer is buying you for the total experience and hence in a sense you would want to market your product as a holistic service so service industry in a sense does not remain in the realms of only servicing industry the way we would define it brands and the products even in the fmcg business like you mentioned earlier over the experiential marketing you have to look at the entire product offering as a service what did we do we took an approach of only digital to create a brand loyalty among the discerning consumers of course at the right tg the experience has been so wonderful and in fact a loyalty created around the brand is close to 70% retention of any new consumer who comes into the category how have we done that digital is in a, as i said is the end to end product so barring the delivery of the product at the consumer's home every other interaction that the consumer has with the brand is on the digital platform so be it from the customer acquisition at the first stage to closing the loop on reading reviews writing back to the consumer the consumer using you as a platform of payment which is like i mean why i'm raising this example is it's very common for us to all use digital platforms for payment but even today if you go back and ask your uh, mom or your spouse the milk payments are still done in cash uh, to your home delivery guy in this case 45 to 50% of the payments were happening on the digital gateway in that sense you are really able to close a loop and that's what i say digital native consumers uh, digital native brands addressing digital na- native consumers is where loyalty is getting b- uh, built tell us a little bit about how you sort of took that category on the internet and uh, used content to build uh, more involvement i mean i'm sure if people were paying for it online there was lots of involvement with the brand tell us a little bit about that as i said it was more about a concept selling yeah so it is a low involvement product category what does a delivery man deliver at your home many a times it's in the hands of the delivery boy or the or the delivery uh, agent in that case here the entire brand was built on a concept of saying it's a farm to home concept where right from the milching of the animals to the end delivery at your home the entire product was untouched by human hand that was the product offering which was uh, which was the uniqueness of the brand how do you bring about the uniqueness of the brand is where innovation on digital happened thank you so much because that's that's very very good insight is wonderful having you here thank you thank you thank you my next guest is ayushmita biswas group head marketing and corporate communication uh, financial services piramal capital and housing finance ayushmita has 17 years of experience in areas such as brand strategy and management corporate communication digital marketing advertising and marketing communication welcome ayushmita thank you uh, ayushmita walk us through the process of uh, since we are talking about brand loyalty uh, driving loyalty and uh, loyalty via customer service in the financial service sector the financial services as a industry is fairly boring it's uh, it's something there because you have to it's not you want to so talk about having your bank account or your credit card or your loans it's something that's a mandate which is why you're there so in that scenario loyalty doesn't really stand it's the experiences that a consumer feels with the brand at that given point of time at the per- point of purchase is what stays and uh, financial services is still trust based so the word of mouth still plays a very strong play so you're constantly reviewing um you're now obviously with the digital world it's all open to you so you're accessing a lot more content a lot more information and then making your decision space is that so a lack of it is more like it so we are constantly as marketers we are constantly striving with that to build affinity a brand affinity today uh, consumers are not loyal to the brand at least in the financial services they are loyal to the experiences that they are having while they are making a decision while they are making a purchase so it's really how you are holding on to that consumer and at the same point of time you have split loyalty you are probably you're banking with hdfc but you have your home loan with a with another housing finance company 
So and it's you've got safe. to learn to live with that. Yes. Okay. And uh, tell me, as brands, because because the truth is, somebody somebody is going to put uh, put money and uh, time and some risk because there's not just money. There's data. There's many other things. Sort of. Going into a transaction with a financial service brand, mm -hmm. uh, is there the element of trust? It is. Trust plays huge. Whether you're uh, going to give money to the bank in your savings account or whether you're trying to take a loan, either way, trust matters. For example, I'll uh, give you a live example. We've had customers who come to us just because uh, they are more comfortable with the old uh, PSUs they start questioning us like we are an HFC housing finance company so um, would you stay tomorrow would you go away I mean even with the brand weight of Piramal we get these questions uh, HDFC limited gets these questions like why should we come and uh, take a home loan from you it's it's you taking money I mean if the customer decides to not pay it's the brand at the loss but that transaction still has a huge trust uh, uh, element associated with it uh, do you have any reactions or questions? Question, not on this particular take, but uh, just uh, from the industry that you're from. Um, as a marketer, how has it changed? Uh, because again, like many other brands and categories, women are really opening up to directly conversing with you. And, um, you know, the way they transact and the way they behave is completely different. So is it something that uh, banking systems are opening up to in terms of addressing this new consumer set? Financial services, yes, because now we see more women coming into decision making in general, be it, uh, you know, especially at a home buying level, that's primarily being in a very male dominated scenario. So, uh, five years back also the uh, ratio would be 90-10. Today the ratio has shifted to 70-30, that's a huge shift. And women have started questioning, they have started asking the numbers, they have started uh, negotiating. So these are very new things. And we have women who are single owners as well. So that's a huge shift that we are seeing and refreshingly so. Uh, thank you so much. Pleasure. Uh, it was wonderful having you here and Likewise. a refreshing thought. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on episode number 10 of Brand Studio Live, co-hosted by HT Brand Studio and DMA Asia. A special thanks to our friends from DMA Asia and Vatsal Ashar for powering this wonderful event. A big round of applause for our seven brand masters who have taken out the time to be with us, uh, share their insights. Thank you to our radio partner, Fever FM, who helps evangelize the concept. A very, very big thank you to BSC for hosting us. This is a great venue. And thank you all for tuning in. We look forward to another episode. We will be coming back soon. Stay tuned.